If you want to see what I'm going to do with my eye look today and get a life update during that whole process, then stick around. Hi there, it's Ilan and welcome back, or if it's your first time, welcome to HMM Makeup or Hmm Makeup. I have, um, there's been some changes. There's, there have been some changes for sure. And uh, I have been away since the end of December. I took, I thought I was going to take a few weeks off and I found out in a rough way I needed more. So I've actually been away since uh, the end of the year and we are now March 1st. So I have been away for a while and I have a bunch of things to update you on. So let's get into it. <laughs> what, what is the first sign that I am rusty? Uh, that would be that I turn on my camera to start speaking with you. Obviously, you saw a little bit of footage already. And um, my battery was dead in my camera because I didn't have the foresight to actually make sure that my batteries were charged up for this video. We're starting on such a good foot. <laughs> See, I need to be back because I I'm definitely getting rusty. Anyway, so uh, fresh battery in the camera and we can, uh, we can finally uh, talk. So yeah, two months away, but was I absolutely not thinking about YouTube no, I was definitely thinking about YouTube and I have a few videos coming up soon uh, to cover some of that um, thought process that happened off camera and I'll give you a sneak peek. I did uh, get a bunch of things um, over the last, I'd say, three months and uh, that obviously have not gone on camera. A lot of these items are very practical items. It's a heavy box though. And um, I think that it's going to be a lot of fun to dig through this box and show you what it is that I uh, picked up. Oh, it's a lot of utilitarian stuff, along with a few really fun things. Uh, but for the most part, um, I think that this is going to be useful in just seeing what kinds of products that I pick up on a regular basis. And I think it's always helpful to see what other people do and uh, so uh, look out for that one. I think that um, a peek into the contents of this box will be good. So that's a little bit of a teaser for you for a uh, future video. And another thing that I want to say up front is um, I've got this little boo-boo here and it is a side effect of where I live. So I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada and that is right in the center of North America and uh, longitudinally it is the center of Canada. So uh, I'm right above the uh, US border by just a, a couple of hours drive and uh, and also right in the middle of, of Canada. So anyway, uh, that is where I am and it happens to be a very cold place in Canada which is the Manitoba Prairies. And what happens is that I end up usually every year splitting my lip because of the dry, the dryness and wearing a scarf and all that good stuff that comes with the, the territory here, literally comes with the territory. And so, yeah, so you'll have that distraction and I'm calling it out because otherwise folks could think I somehow injured myself or whatever. No, it's just, it's just the Canadian winter and that's why my city has the nickname Winter Peg. It's, it's quite, uh, quite dry uh, <laughs> in the winter time. Although we got a lot of beautiful white snow this year and a lot for, for what I would consider anyway. I think it's, it's a decent amount of precipitation. And it's been so nice to walk with my dog on the river, to walk on the frozen river for months out of the year. It feels like a private park almost for all the residents that uh, are along the river and it's it's a lot of fun. It's uh, yeah, it's a nice little zen thing to do uh, on a regular basis. 
Anyway, and I thought I would start off with a couple of items, a couple things that I purchased and or have just recently discovered and or have repurchased over time that I think are nice to share and um, that are not necessarily makeup related, but that I have really been enjoying uh, during my time away from YouTube and uh, I thought I would share. So let's just start. One of them is a beauty product and the other ones are not, uh, but they are a product I'm very enthusiastic about. Nothing I'm talking about is sponsored. Just I'm putting that right up front. One of them that I am really liking is a hair product. Now I, I have been using it for a while, but I don't talk about it a whole lot. So you'll see um, that it has the name on it right here um, because I depotted the remainder of the container. But as you can tell, the container is very empty and it is Frizz Ease. And Frizz Ease is a very nice product if you find that you can't get your hair to behave properly. Well, that is how I get my hair to not look like it has a bunch of flyaways on a regular basis before I get on camera and I really, really like it. And it doesn't take a lot to you just uh, put it between your fingers and then kind of scrunch up your hair. And I really enjoy it. I This is my fourth one, I think. So obviously I keep repurchasing because I, I like it quite a bit. And I can show you the consistency because I depotted some. So I'll just bring it close to the camera and you can see the consistency of it. So it's, it's sort of like a, a light hand cream, uh, but of course it's for the hair. And so that is what that product looks like. And I really enjoy it. And I only depot it when I'm having trouble getting the product out of the tube. So that is uh, very recent depotting, uh, just to make sure I can use every little last bit of it. Now, this is kind of, this is a brand. And I'll say a brand I've only tried a couple of products from but I've been jazzed about everything I have tried, and that is Yeti. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the Yeti brand, but I have three items here that I want to show you. Okay, so this is my coffee cup right now. And you'll see it's purple. Purple is my favorite color, so that is not difficult to know that I would want to have the purple container. And uh, the top of it looks like that, and the, the way it uh, opens and closes is with a magnet. It's really neat. And it's a double walled beverage container. So you don't feel any of the heat coming uh, through at all, which is really cool. And, uh, and I really do like the, um, the shape of it. It feels very comfortable. Now it, this is very big for my size hands. I'm, I'm five foot two. I'm a, not a very big person. Um, but I just like, um, the size of this container and it reminds me of someone. So it's, it's kind of a, a nice thing to have and uh, and so I'm very partial to it and I also picked up the the more me version <laughs> as far as the smaller one that fits more into my hand uh, given my size and it has the same type of top and I do like the um, the the glass or it's not glass it's plastic the plastic see-through because you can tell right away how much coffee you have left whereas uh, with other thermal mugs very often you can't see inside and uh, so that that is something that I appreciate uh, from this uh, this brand again not sponsored this is stuff I purchased myself and I'm just jazzed about so I have one of these I have I purchased two of these and I also purchased two of these which you can tell um, I have not used yet because the label is still on it, but this is a heavier version of the other two, but super, super well sealed. So if I'm out and about, um, I think that this is the version that I would use and it has a super duper seal on the top that uh, ensures that it's not open unless you really want it to be open. So I, yeah. Oh, that was loud. Sorry. Um, but I'm pretty happy with, let me just take the paper out to show you the inside. I'm really happy with these containers. And again, double walled, pretty neat. And look at, look at how much. <laughs> 
you get to screw this, screw this in. So obviously they want it to stay hot. And there are a lot of different beverage containers like these double walled. I just really like the aesthetic of Yeti. And um, this is probably the one I'm least um, jazzed about as far as aesthetic, but it's also the one that's going to keep everything absolutely as piping hot as possible. And if I'm doing a full day off-site consulting uh, facilitation session, I want to have coffee that's warm without wondering if I have time to go downstairs to a cafeteria or across the street to a, a restaurant to get a cup of coffee. So this is, this is my solution and I'm quite happy with it. And it's quite heavy. This, this version is quite heavy compared to the other um, cup that I showed you that's a little bit smaller than this. But you know what, the customer service for the brand is great, uh, whether you can, and they're available on Amazon and they're available at yeti.com, I think, or .ca if you're in Canada. Um, and no, it's not sponsored. Again, not sponsored, not sponsored. I'm just loving this drinkware and wanted to let you know about it. And with that, before I get to the next <laughs> thing I want to talk about, I'm going to take a, a sip of my coffee. All good. Okay, I talked about a few things that I really like and um, there are a few makeup items that I'm going to be applying on my face that are applying to applying to my face that I really like that I want to talk about as I go through. Uh, I'm going to reapply right away the, I took the label off, but it's Burt's Bees, uh, the cucumber flavor of Burt's Bees. And I really enjoy this product. And I have to be very careful with that little bit of troublesome lip right there. I really enjoy Burt's Bees. I just wish they were more affordable because they're really expensive. And I mean, there's their beeswax and I guess that makes it expensive, but I really wish I could uh, buy them for a more reasonable price. The inflation has made this, this product a little bit too expensive for my taste. I, I ended up buying a different brand this last time around. This is my last Burt, Burt's Bees and I'm just enjoying the rest of it before it all disappears. Uh, it disappears for what I have in my collection. That's what I mean. I, I'm not saying Burt's Bees is going anywhere. <laughs> don't, don't panic. But uh, yeah, I really like that product as well. Okay, so that makes it three products. Now let's talk about a couple things that are on my face that are also uh, some favorites. And I, I enjoy this one and I enjoy the Makeup Forever version, they're both very similar. Let me just take out the other one. I can't assume that you've ever seen both. So this is the one I applied today and my camera is very bright today, or my the, the ring light is very bright today. So that is um, a brand sh uh, sold at Chopper's Drug Mart, Quo. And as you can see, this is very, very well loved. And that's what I have in my brows today. This is actually a depotted Sephora brow pencil, brow wax pencil. Uh, and uh, this one is a repressed brow um, powder. And then this one is a highlighter for the brow bone, but it's, it's a little bit tough to pick up, which is why it's not been as used as the other two. And uh, I do use this little brush uh, on as I travel, but when I'm in town, this is the, the one I use, and, and this would be my preferred brush uh, on the regular if, uh, if I wasn't uh, needing to be out and about once in a while. And for a good measure, let me show you the Makeup Forever version. And of course, there's a, an eyebrow hair in it because I use it. And this is the less used Makeup Forever version, that's the wax. And the other ones are for uh, brow and brow bone highlight. And I quite like them. And they both have a mirror as well, which makes it good for travel as far as uh, getting your brow game working, no matter where you are. Um, and along with the brow boxes, I do also have a brow setter. 
Now this is light hold and if you have brows as prominent as, as mine, this may not be enough for you. I do also like the Brow Freeze by ABH. Uh, again, not super, not a super brow, strong brow hold, but this is the Tartiste Brow Gel. And I'm on my second one of these and I think it's okay. I don't think it's fantastic. Um, so if you don't like your brows moving around, you probably want something that's more of a glue <laughs> on your face than this. But I, would, I thought I would just let you know what I've done with, uh, with my eyes so far today. I think the last little bit that I've done is with uh, this, which is the Kelly Contour from Smashbox, and it's one of my favorite face palettes of all time. And I have used today, which I tend to use over and over again, is this color. I can have a match here. This color for contour, so this is right here and here, and also uh, just around the edge of my hairline goes about this this far around uh, here is is what I use and then this is what I use for blush which is kind of a peachy brown um, rosy peachy brown and um, yeah it's still kind of it's kind of between rose and and, uh, and brown so but a peachy rose and I used this one as my highlighter for the brow bone and for my cheeks. And I did also, oh no, I talked about the, the, the blush already. So that, that's a contour blush and a highlighter on top of the, the blush. So I really like this. I think you can tell that it's being loved. Um, there's, there's somewhere in every single one of the pans. I think this is the one, these two. These two are the ones I don't use um, this one definitely not, and this one I do tend to use sometimes for brow bone, but um, it's not it's not a, an absolute go-to. But every one of the pans has wear, and I would say the contour pan is the one that I've, I've used the most so far. And it just doesn't the saturation of the color. It, I don't need very much. It's it's just a really nice palette. If you can still get your hands on it, I would recommend it. Actually. Face, um, face products from Smashbox in general, they're all usually pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I like them all as a general rule. And another palette, I did use the Complexionista today. I, um, oh, there goes the plastic. I always forget there's plastic in there and I have to clean the plastic every time because it drops to the floor. Um, I did use uh, Boing Number no. 2 concealer from um, Benefit. And that is something that I put around my nose uh, just to hide the, the red veins. And it looks like I might need a little bit more. I must have blown my nose since I've applied this, so let's just fix it. I have something under my eye. There we go. Okay. So that is uh, what I've used from this palette. And it's not, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, this is, it's the Boing Industrial Concealer, but I have refilled this. So it's not the original product that was in, uh, in this uh, uh, palette. Okay, so I need to keep updating you, um, and but I want to do my eyes uh, at the same time. So I'm going to take this fluffy brush, which I love using to put um, the, this beige color on my eye uh, lids, just as a, as a base. And so what have I been doing while not on YouTube? And it's been um, a number of things. I will say, I have uh, f focused back on to dating and I'm not somebody who loves going on a bunch of dates. I am someone who prefers to go on a select number of dates because I find them absolutely draining. It's, it's very hard for me to meet people. I can talk to a camera. I can talk to you no problem, but to, in real life, to have long, drawn-out dialogues with people I don't know, I just get 
worried beforehand, anxious uh, right before and during, and um, yeah, sometimes it clicks and and we do uh, really well, and that actually happened to me recently when I met a very nice gentleman and um, we've gone out we went out the first time at a location of my choice I'm I don't have a car that's working right now so I'm walking everywhere or using public transportation so I tend to ask for a location that's not too far from me or that would be just a quick bus ride um, and not too far from me means a 40 minute walk um, Rain or shine, no problem. I'm a walker, not a big deal. So I, we ended up meeting up at a place that's not even 10 minute walk uh, away from my home and we hit it off. And to my surprise, he invited me to go to a restaurant called The Keg. I think there are The Keg in the US as well, I'm not sure. I do believe that they're in a few different places in Canada. And uh, yeah, so we ended up going for a second date. I was really excited and well, it, we continued to do well. And uh, so I have a new bow and uh, I'm pretty happy about that. So he's a he's very, very nice man. And um, we have a lot in common, um, some appreciation for photography, some appreciation for global travel, and uh, yeah, so we're still getting to know each other, but it's it's a lot of fun. I will not say his name because I have not asked his permission, but it's, it's, I would say it is the best, um, what would you call it? best match, I guess my best match uh, that I have maybe ever had. And that just knocks me off my seat. <laughs> and so that's been that's been really, really nice. And I have uh, talked a little bit about the fact that I have a YouTube channel. So I've talked about you. I didn't ask your permission first. I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, and so he knows about it. I didn't, I haven't sent him a link or anything. I, I don't want to do that. Uh, not just yet, <laughs> but to me, not everybody responds well to somebody who has a YouTube channel thinking that, you know, you're, you're just by default, uh, quite the extrovert and uh, that you like, you see you're an, an attention seeker. And for a lot of YouTubers, the only reason they can do videos is because they're talking to a camera and they don't feel like they're talking to an audience of people, if that makes sense. And that, that's kind of how I feel as well, is, is I'm talking to a camera and I'm relating with people in the comments. And so I, I almost try to forget that a bunch of people are watching the video. <laughs> what I focus on is the fact that I get to talk to people and uh, have an exchange and, and a dialogue or answer questions um, off camera. That's the only way I don't get freaked out by doing videos on YouTube. So anyway, I, I don't know how that came across that I have a YouTube channel, but I said it, it's part of who I am. And yeah, so it didn't scare him away. <laughs> We've gone out since. And yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes, but that is a major development for me. And it, it was, um, it came at just the right time because I, I think I was spending too much time alone and I was starting to go to a dark place and and I was just disillusioned with dating apps and I was just tired. I was tired of not putting on a front because I've been quite genuine with 
who I am, what I like, what I don't like, and what I'm looking for. Um, but it's hard. If, especially, I would I would consider myself an introvert unless I have a job to do and I just put on the you know the the show I need to as far as doing my my job. But um, I find it very hard to take the leap and meet people and really get to know someone. I find it very draining. And so I was at the point where I was kind of going, what's the point? I'm tired. I don't have the energy. I feel spent. I don't have the energy to meet more people, blah, blah, blah. And that's when I meet the guy who I have the most in common so far in, at this point, years of three years, Go at least two, 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 and, two and change of, of looking and all of a sudden I have somebody who I have a lot in common with and it's, it's a lot of fun and at a minimum I'm going to have a friend I think <laughs> for uh, quite a while. I guess I'll find out, my future self will find out if I'm right. But uh, yeah, so that's been uh, a big development for me and, and it's very new but it feels really good. <laughs> So that's, that's been a, a nice change. And it feels like I went from one side and did a flip within a week <laughs> of how I was feeling. So if you're feeling down in the dumps, whether it's your job, whether it's your uh, family, whether it's, your, it's a, a budding relationship, hang on tight for dear life. It gets better. Because I really, I have to say, I really went to a dark place for a bit. And uh, I, I would say, I would say that the darkest, I think. Yeah, I think I would say the darkest. It was, it was rough there for a while. And that coupled with what happened before the end of the year, which I should touch on, is... I think that they were related, if I if I consider it. So it was dating fatigue, and just I, the the effort of meeting new people, um, coupled with having gone from early October to basically the end of December. Just daily videos, sometimes filming up to three or three to five videos a day just to be able to, to do the editing and everything. I really pushed myself hard and I had nothing left. When I got into 2023, I was a shell of myself. I was exhausted. I All I could do was pet my dog. I couldn't do any work. I was, I had, I did work that was the absolute requirement, which was I coach people and I do facilitation. And coach people meaning physical coaching. And, uh, and I also do uh, facilitation and, um, uh, well, facilitation kind of covers it. Helping a group of people in usually an organization, a corporation, a not-for-profit sort things out I, I bring the process, I bring the methodology, and I bring the the energy uh, to get people focused on the things that will help them get to end of task. So that's what I do. And I had nothing. I had nothing to offer for the first while. And it was scary. I was completely drained. I can understand I have an appreciation now for what burnout must feel like because I really think I was on the edge of not being able to function. <laughs> and that was a big eye opener for me saying, oh, I do have an empty tank signal. There, There is a bottom. <laughs> um, to the gas tank and it gave me a lot to think about and 
a lot more focus from me on on self-care and just to to watch out for what I'm doing and I'm still clawing my way back from that very bad patch and some things that I'm to work on and whatnot are, are late I just I was fried I really was fried and um, and it was uh, yeah it was a it was a rough patch so I'm happy that on the other side of things as I said hang on tight it's gonna get better um, that uh, that I have this lovely lovely person who's come into my life and and I really uh, like him and he's just a tremendous person uh, as I said it before I love uh, him as a person and um, yeah I just feel very fortunate so I, I wish if you you if it's something that you are seeking if it's something that you're hoping for I really hope that it uh, comes your way that or if you believe in that if you can manifest it that you manifest it sooner than later because I think that Um, though we can spend a lot of time solo, and I have definitely a lot over the last few years, just based on my um, separation situation, I, I really think that connecting with people and getting out there and taking care of ourselves is, it's important. Connections are important. And I almost feel like, <laughs> like I'm saying this to my past self because I, I wish I had done a little bit more to stick my neck out, but I, I kind of was, I was just meeting up with the wrong people and, and that's okay. I don't think I was doing anything wrong. I think you have to meet people to figure out who's right for you and who, who isn't. Uh, yeah, it's draining and, and we have to be compassionate with ourselves when we're doing hard things and I for me meeting new people is hard it's hard it's draining uh, it brings along with it all sorts of feelings all at once you don't know where to focus and your mind takes you all over the place uh, emotions take you all over the place and it's we're supposed to make informed decisions, rational decisions, and we need to be able to really consider things. When it comes to relationships, it's easier said than done. It's not obvious how to think and feel and, and behave when you're trying to forge new relationships, whether it's friends, whether it's, it's family you're rekindling with, whether it's a significant other, whether it's a new work relationship, it's not easy. And for anyone who it comes naturally, you have a superpower. Enjoy it because not all of us have it. But uh, I guess I, I just wanted to to share what's happened for me in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, that the burnout after the three months of intense YouTube that was a bit rough, but the Coming back from it has really started to be quite positive. Like I said, I've, I've had a, the beautiful opportunity to meet somebody I'm, I'm very connected with and, um, and also to take just a break from something I was spending a lot of time on that is, I mean, it is superficial, which is the, the makeup. I really enjoy the artistry, but I don't think that we have to have layers of makeup on our face every day <laughs> um, but I'm happy to be back to be back with you to to create some looks now I've talked a lot and I haven't been applying a whole lot to my face and I realize I'm very tired I'm still looking tired <laughs> it's gonna take me weeks <laughs> to get over that but I do want to finish the the eye look and so I did do the beige so it's ready it's a ready canvas and I wanted to in the spirit of gratitude and the spirit of talking about people I really like. Uh, I thought that I would bring out a specific palette. 
And the palette I want to bring out is Tiny Marvels. And I want to bring up Tiny Marvels uh, for a couple reasons. One of the reasons is because it was created by Mel Thompson and Mel Thompson, she has passed away now. I don't think it's, is it two years? I don't know, I'm sorry, I didn't look it up earlier. She's been gone for a while. She uh, was a very beloved YouTuber, certainly beloved by me, uh, and a, a very big following on YouTube. And she deserved every single person and then some uh, who was watching her show. Uh, shows. <laughs> what am I talking about? Watching her YouTube videos. Where, where, where am I? 1980s? Anyway, uh, and I just thought a little tribute to her and her family. And, um, and Sydney Grace, I do believe, still carries this Tiny Marvels palette. And um, the proceeds, uh, a, num a fraction of the proceeds are portion. Portion. That's the right, right word. A portion of the proceeds goes to um, her family. So uh, Sydney Grace is still doing that and that's um, very classy of Sydney Grace to do that. Uh, they collaborated with each other for quite a while and it's lovely to hear that that is still happening. Okay, so I want to use some of my favorites from uh, Sydney Grace in here and I want to focus on this part of the palette. So browns and mauves and burgundies. So this is what I want to focus on here. And if you haven't heard yet, not the right brush, hang on. If you haven't heard yet, I am a fan of the Death's Head Moth. It is the, uh, the design, the logo for my gym. And Mel had the Death's Head Moth as one of the insects named in this palette. There's, we have a, a, uh, a bond. <laughs> she never knew about it, but when I saw that in the palette, I just freaked and knew that I absolutely had to have it. I was, however, I was definitely going to buy that palette no matter what, because I wanted to support her and I am glad I did. Okay, so I'm just going again in Death's Head Moth. And I'll just do one side and then I'll do the other side off camera, which is something I tend to do. I'm a little rusty in doing it. Okay, and that's going up a little high. So I'm going to use that same uh, brush that I used to put the beige base on the eye. And there we go. It's not very complicated. Sydney Grace eyeshadows are the chef's kiss. I mean, they're they're beautiful. Okay, and I'm going to go in with this little guy, and I'm going to go in with which one do I want? Hmm. I think I'm going to do something unusual. I'm going to take another fluffy brush, and I'm actually going to go into Love Bug and use that on the inner uh, part of the lid of the eye, I guess. I don't know why. Something is making me want to go and put a little bit of that mauve mauve Dusty Rose. I really like this. I really do. Well, that's something I wasn't expecting. Okay, uh, I'm going to take the that um, Death's Head Moth and uh, bring that brown down here. And it's a light enough color that I'm going to use my bigger smudger. I would normally use a small smudger for this, but um, given it's a more of a lighter brown, I think we'll be okay. There. Now that really defines the eye, doesn't it? Okay, I'm happy with that. And now I want to accentuate uh, the rest of the eye. So I'm going to go a little darker here. 
and hmm, I think I'm going to have to go with fire butts. <laughs> so I'm going to go with uh, spider uh, to deepen the outer corner, and I'm going to go with fire. Uh, where is it? Fire butts. This one right here as the second shadow. Okay, so back to this one. And I'm going to go into spider to deepen up the outer lid. I'm just tapping. Okay, I think that looks decent. And now fire butts, and for that one I will use my preci precise, um, no, it's not precise smudger, this is my, what's it called again? Um, ah, multitasker brush, that's what it is. Okay, and fire butts is the one I'm going for. It's a beautiful kind of goldy uh, olive. I can get away with it uh, with my green eyes because it has enough of a gold tone to it that the green is not overpowering. So with green eyes, it's a little bit much to, to have green, very vibrant green eyeshadow, and I'm really happy with that. That looks pretty good. Nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to, oh, I see a little smudge. Sprinkles from above. Just came down a little bit too much here. I think I'm going to finish this eye and then replicate it on the other side. And I want to go in with, do I want, oh yeah. I should have done this first. So I'm going to use the Urban Decay, um, what is it, Legend. Yes, of course, Legend. That's what I always use on the upper water lines. I'm going to do that right now. Look away if you're squeamish. Okay, that was really easy. Okay, so I've got the uh, waterline done and I'm going to do the upper lash line liner using this, which is called, I always mess it up, the Little Black Liner from Estee Lauder. And I'm not huge on this product, but it does work fine. It's, it's, uh, it's all right. And it has, it's double-ended and I always keep um, opening it up the wrong way, even though it has writing on it to say which side is what. <laughs> um, one of them is the this fine point which I'm using and the other one is is a, like a, a wider flat tip and I'm not quite sure why. I, I don't think I would pick that side ever. Not a big fan of it. I'm not going to do a wing. I think it's dramatic enough and my lashes with mascara should do the trick. So, oh, it's getting dry. That's good. I just bought this product because I only bought this product, I should say, because I was trying to get the holiday kits. If you are not familiar already, I do reviews of the holiday kits that come out at Christmas from Essie Lauder and Nancom. So if that's something that you like to hear about, I do those every year. Okay, so that's as much as I'm going to do with that. And I think, oh, I skipped a little bit. Yeah, it's getting dry. 
good to know. I'm happy about that. I'll get to use better liners soon. Okay. And I, I force myself to use liners that I'm not necessarily a big fan of uh, just because I want to use them up and I don't want to waste, right? And I'm going to use this uh, product, which is the ABH uh, Lash Brag, I think it is. Yeah, Lash Brag Mascara. It's a nice weighted mascara. It, it feels it feels nice. And although I think weighted products are always kind of a, a waste. They feel luxurious, but do we really need that for the environment? I don't know. I'm always struggling with that because it's it's a little bit of a uh, tug of war in my head of well that's kind of a waste but oh it feels so good oh but it's kind of a waste but ah, it feels so luxurious it's a little internal fight with myself a struggle of sorts seriously struggle i'm being a little melodramatic Am I not? Uh, what else during the last two months have I focused on? I guess I, I did focus on dating for for a bit because I was I knew I was getting tired of it. And I thought before you pull anchor it in, just really know that you you've given it a shot so go out get out there and uh, and I'm glad I did because that's how I met uh, the gentleman I'm seeing uh, these days and uh, we're having a lot of fun uh, no matter what happens we're having a lot of fun right now and uh, and it's from my point of view it's going in a good way but um, I will never want to assume what somebody else is experiencing. All right, so that looks good. I need to have some white fluff here and there. I think it's because it's so dry outside. That is one eye done. I, I'm happy with it. I'm going to uh, do the other eye off camera and put a lip on, and that should be the final look. So hang on and uh, I will be back with the final look. Okay, and here is the final look. I am really happy with the way it turned out. The only thing that you haven't seen is uh, the lip product that I uh, have put on my lips, and it is from this L'Oréal palette called La Palette, uh, a lip palette. And this is the color that I have um, put on uh, my lips today. And as you can tell, I am panning this lip palette. And this uh, number one shade is, what is it called? Uh, number one cream is what it's called for some reason. Uh, oh, and they, they identify cream versus matte. So it's the number one cream and it is the deepest shade in the palette as far as what's left and very comfortable very comfortable very creamy and uh, definitely not a drying matte it's a it's a very creamy lip stick uh, as far as that particular one and i think it goes pretty well with the eye look i mean i could have probably used uh this one just based on the um the eye look this one or this one, but I, I'm liking, I'm liking the, the deep brown so that I, I'm not upset about it whatsoever. I'm happy with the look. I hope uh, you enjoyed this kind of catch up session and um, I don't have any real changes on the work front, but I am working on that as well. And uh, I probably will offer up another update at some point. But uh, as far as coming back to talk to some good friends and please leave some comments, I can't wait to chat with you. Uh, I am very happy to have filmed this video and to be back. And a couple of things uh, that are coming up. 
I do want to talk uh, nail polish. I do want to talk goodies that I have picked up over the last few months that I've been away. It's nothing fancy. I'm just showing you some products that are repeat purchases and I think that that's always interesting to see. So uh, look for another, uh, I was gonna say movie. <laughs> because I use the iMovie platform to edit. Uh, just look for another video on that. Uh, so the this box, as I mentioned before, this box. And uh, some empties are coming as well and some nail polish uh, updates as far as combos that I've uh, used. I. Right above this shelf is all of the nail polish combos that I used while my, I was away. I don't have pictures for a lot of them, but I can at least show you the combos that I wore and we can maybe go through it uh, quickly. I definitely like what I have on my nails today. It's kind of neat. It feels like, it feels like a Lindor chocolate box <laughs> for some reason, that Lindor kind of gold and the, uh, a dark nail polish that kind of looks like dark chocolate dark cho chocolate with a little hint of cherry in there uh, but anyway that's it uh, look forward to some more videos I will not be posting daily I've learned my lesson I need to be careful but a couple three times a week I think is reasonable and uh, I'm just gonna shoot for a couple a couple a week and just kind of see how it goes if you have any requests for videos that you like, uh, that you have seen on this channel over the years, I've been doing it since 2018, uh, let me know and I might resurrect some fun things that I've been doing uh, on and off. Oh, and I'm also kind of into candles if you want to see kind of a favorite candle come up here and there, let me know uh, on that as well. If I've missed anything, if you have any questions, concerns, let me know uh, again in the comments and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, as always, take care.